So you have heard about Next 3 and now you are building your backend APIs and your frontend with the Next 3 itself. But you want to make a good REST API using Next and you realize there are not many things you can do with it without some explicit or some boilerplate codes. For instance, let's say you want to install Mongoose and you can you want to work with uh, MongoDB. So in that case, you have to create a Nitro plugin. And for beginners, it would be hard to understand what Nitro is because you are working with Nuxt. So where does this term Nitro comes from? Then you have to know what Nitro is. Then it goes like a rabbit hole. You have to know Nitro. Then you have to uh, know about the H3 that is powering the Nuxt backend. And you will be lost in no time. That is why I have created this module called NACT Server Utils. If you are working with MongoDB, if you want to build a full-fledged API inside NACT using MongoDB, then NACT Server Utils is the best buddy for you. The module comes with a collection of utility classes which you can use in your server directory to streamline your API making process. Now let's deep dive into the documentation and see what it has to offer. So as I have said, you will get uh, a collection filters option that you get uh, with the monolith framework such as your Laravel or E. So basically same kind of a thing. Then you'll get a built-in Mongol support. You don't need to create any plugin or you don't need to know what Nitro is or H3 is. You just install the module, add the environment variable and we'll take care of the rest. So in the documentation in uh, in the getting started page, you will see I have written this what, who is this module for? Because not all the people who will be using Next might not need this plugin because uh, this will be, you know, some sort of opinionated version of what could be done in some different way. But this is what I like. And chances are if you are using Mongoose or MongoDB or if you are coming from Express MongoDB environment then you might also feel at home with this module. Installation process is as simple as installing any other Next module. First you have to install the package itself then you have to add it to the modules array and there are some minimal configuration. So the first is enabled it is a optional uh, property. You can set it to true if you want to use the next server utils. If you set it to false, then you will not be able to use it. So you don't have to pass these two. And all, we also have a dev tools. The dev tools will basically show you this uh, documentation page. And third, last but not the least, the MongoDB URI. Let's say you want to use the MongoDB. You want to connect to the MongoDB server. Then you have to pass a MongoDB URI. So for all the secret as it should be, we are storing the MongoDB URI in our environment file and we are giving it an environment a variable. If you are not using this, still you will you will be able to use the other feature. So the first feature of, of this uh, utils utility classes is the API feature class. So this API feature class will help you filter, search, sort, limit, and paginate your uh, MongoDB documents. So this is a rough example of how you can use it. So basically, uh, this class, you have to take a, make an instance of this class and this class will build a query for you to uh, await for. For example, let's say I want the user and I want, uh, I want the user to uh, filter, search and sort and limit and so on and so on uh, by the parameters uh, of the query parameters of the request, then uh, this is what you have to do. First, you have to get the query from the event, uh, next three event. Then you have to send that query along with your uh, Mongoose query. So don't get too lost here. So the first parameter it would take is your MongoDB query. It can be anything. It can be user defined. And then you can put your conditions as well if you want, if you would like that way. And then we have to put the query string right here. And then you just have to chain uh, all these uh, method in order to use it. And now you will get a features.query which will return the query uh, which uh, then you can await for. And then it will give you the filtered results 
then we have our resource helper so chances are let's say if, even if you are using api features or something chances are for most of the curd operation uh, you will be repeating a lot of code right and those code might look like similar let's say you have a users endpoint users get endpoint where you want to reach and all the user and then the filtering will be taken care of right so for that what we have done we have created a resource uh, helpers uh, class which has three as of now which has like three uh, method index shows and destroy which you can just pass it to your event handler and it will handle the rest so for example let's say you want to uh, get all the users right so you don't have to write all the boilerplates code so hear me out so you just have to call the resource helper from the server next server utils and then you can tap into the index method and inside that it takes the options as a parameter you can see all the, the details in the documentation and let's say you want the user model to be uh, to be accessed so you just need to pass the user model and it will take care of the rest uh, you might say that Jahid there needs to be uh, you know it's not that uh, straightforward there needs to be code that needs to be executed before even uh, getting the query or maybe you need something complex so for that we have hook we have a related field we have hook so let's say the user is related to orders and you want the order to be populated with your users so in that case we have another parameter called related and related will take your uh, then you can specify what relation do you have and you can then nest uh, populate as well so let's say you are putting models and then it has orders right and orders might have relation with something else although that is not recommended by mongodb but yes it can be no one is stopping it, right so you can do that as well yeah so then we have the show show will uh, basically uh, let's say this is your api let's say api and then let's say user users and then maybe whatever the id is so it will take the id from the params and then it will uh, get the user details and it will uh, uh, show it to you so the the parameters are almost same it has the models which is required it has the option of related if it has two hooks one which runs before uh, uh, querying the document and one which runs after the querying the documents and it also returns uh, uh, the results as well so you can format the results in 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 your own way as well same uh, with the destroy uh, as well only difference is it has an integrity method so what happens is let's say your users is uh, you, your user has some critical relation with uh, let's say let's, let's for example let's suppose they have a profile collection and users and profile are somehow connected let's just assume so what happens in case of more uh, in case of uh, a normal database like relational database you can say postgres or mysql it will not uh, let you delete that unless you explicitly specify what to do with uh, with this kind of uh, things right but we don't have such thing in mongodb right so we have to build something on our own to check the integrity of that particular models with some other models right so that's why uh, you know for the delete uh, we have this integrity option which in which you can pass almost any number of uh, your relation you can specify the local field you can specify the foreign field and just like how you do in your mysql so if you want to dig deeper then go ahead with the in the api or maybe if you want to if you are a pro 10x coder then you'd be interested in the github profile so just go to the github repo then uh then the next plan was to uh, have the authorization so this is this is the part where you uh, authorize your user to uh, access certain resource of your application so we have the authorization method although it now only has one method uh, that uh, checks for the uh, for the event against a, against a condition but later on would be adding a full fledged uh, different options as well so let's say uh, you have a authenticated user that we have stored in the context of your event 
So let's say I'm extracting the authenticated users, and now I only want uh, I I only want to proceed to if the user is admin. So what I need to go, I need to call authorizer dot allows, and I have to pass the uh, Nitro event again. Don't get confused. Nitro is what powering the next uh, backend or the API route or the server route, whatever you can say. It is also created by the next team, so don't uh, think it is created by some other people. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So you have to pass the event and then the second parameter would take a callback. And if the result of the callback is yes, then it will proceed. If not, then it will throw an uh, error um, and to the user that uh, you are forbidden. This uh, request is forbidden, you cannot use this, right? You can also pass the error object as well if you want. So this is about our authorization. Now what about the validation, right? In uh, Laravel, in all kind of other framework, we have a nice validation uh, going on, right? We just have to specify the schema and it validates the request. Same thing uh, goes here as well. So what do we have used? We have used Zod as a validation schema. And uh, we have a validator class which has a method called validate schema. So you can call the validator schema, then you can read your body from the event. If that doesn't match, it will format your error message in a more readable manner, and then it will send it to the user. You don't have to do anything. You just have to call validator.validate. If the validator pass, then it will continue to execute the other code that you might have. So these are all the main features of this uh, utils uh, server, Nux server utils uh, module. We are continuing to build more uh, modules as, as, as we are talking. But uh, the thing is, uh, this is what I use in, in almost all of my Nux uh, 3 project where I have to create a backend API inside the Nux. So, so think of it is like my personal what I use. So that's why I created the plugin so that other people's might be interested, I don't know, you might hate it, but I created it anyway, so why not create a video about it? Then we have uh, Mongoose, right? I have already told you how to uh, use Mongoose, let's say if, if you have not uh, listened to it, so this is a guide how to use the Mongoose, and it doesn't uh, require you to create any Nitro plugin or anything. So yeah, so all these features with just uh, one uh, next module, so yeah, do let me know what you think about it, what is your opinion. Uh, I know it might be totally different in your case. You, you might be using Prisma or some other ORM. But yeah, it's good to hear your opinion. But I guess for MongoDB, if you're, using, uh, if you're building an API with MongoDB, then this, this could really help you a lot. So do let me know in the comment and... Uh, I'll be making a video using this uh, module to create a full-fledged API with authentication with Sidebase, to authorization, to validation, all those things. So for that, what do you have to do? You have to leave a comment, join the Discord server, man. How many times do I have to mention? Please join the Discord server. A lot of good shit is going on there. So yeah, I'll meet you in the next one. Till then, stay blessed and stay happy.